Hello, PC Gamers. I am Tyler Wilde, and I am joined today by Dr. Caitlin McGee, a physical therapist who is focused on gaming and esports, and who has been writing some some guides for us on ergonomics and health. Hi, Kate. Hey, thanks for having me, Tyler. So the reason I wanted to talk to you is we've recently published an article about how to avoid or at least lessen the chance of hurting yourself while PC gaming. And you know, it may come as a surprise to some people that you, you can injure yourself while PC gaming or at least cause yourself some pain. So what, what would you say are, are the most common uh, injuries or points of pain PC gamers may have? Uh, so there's definitely not going to be the same kinds of injuries you'll see, you know, NFL, NBA. Uh, if you manage to fracture a bone while gaming, I'll be very impressed and very concerned. Um, for the most part, the kind of injuries we see are repetitive strain injuries. Um, most The most common kind of class of injuries we'd see would be tendinopathies, um, which is just a big category that refers to any injury to a tendon. It doesn't have to require inflammation. Sometimes inflammation is involved. Uh, but all of these injuries have in common the fact that they are traditionally classed as overuse injuries. Um, we also sometimes call them under preparation injuries because it's not as though your hands are incapable of, of taking that strain. You just need to adequately prepare them for that strain. Is there one thing that you notice a lot of people doing wrong that we can just correct right now? Absolutely. Uh, probably the biggest one that people don't pay attention to is I'm sure as as soon as somebody says the word posture or ergonomics, everybody checks what their posture is. Everybody sits up a little straighter like you just did. Uh, so, you know, that's that's not one I feel the need to harp on so much. Um, but one that people don't necessarily pay attention to is wrist position with your mouse. So when you're you know holding your mouse, we're looking down at my hand right now. The goal is to have your wrist in this nice neutral position in the middle. A lot of us spend our resting time, so time when you're not doing anything with that mouse hand, with it tilted slightly out or slightly in. And you can see when I do that, it kind of crunches down on one side of my wrist. Uh, it gives me a little bit of compression here. Um, that compression can irritate that area over time. Um, and it's a kind of unnecessary strain, right? It's, it's not something you need to do in order to have good mechanics or to keep playing. You could absolutely change it take a little time to make a habit of it and then have your wrist resting in this neutral position at all times and bingo you've taken out a whole bunch of strain that you didn't need to have in the first place another piece of common advice is to take breaks frequently uh, that's not very nuanced advice though is there anything you can elaborate on with regard to how often maybe you should take breaks or what you should do while you take a break sure uh so i have to say one of one of the most fun things i i had happen while i was writing this article that we've referred to uh, was when I commented on breaks and you told me you felt very seen when I asked people uh, rhetorically, you know, what do you do with your break? Do you, you know, scroll through Twitter on your PC or for a change of pace, do you scroll through Twitter on your phone instead? Um, when you're taking a break, kind of the simple rule is if it's been moving, let it rest. If it's been resting, let it move. Um, which is to say your hands and wrists and forearms have been doing all of the work for the most part. So do some things that let them rest. Stand up stretch them out, shake them out, or do absolutely nothing with them while you stand up and get some other parts moving, right? So standing and stretching your legs out, standing and walking a little bit, standing and doing a couple calf raises, standing and walking to the bathroom because hopefully you've been hydrating and now you need to pee. Uh, so your break should be a time to let the moving things rest and let the resting things move. As far as how often you take your breaks, it's gonna depend, um, the, the duration and frequency is gonna depend on how long you're sitting, right? So if I'm sitting for half an hour, I really only need about a two minute break. If I'm gonna be sitting for 60 to 90 minutes, I should probably take about a five minute break. Um, and if you're gonna sit for two hours at a time, please don't do that unless you are stuck in like a never ending Dota match or something. Um, get yourself a whole 10 minutes of upright and moving time. It's also useful to keep in mind eye strain um, and to follow the 20, 20, 20 rule, which is every 20 minutes, you should look about 20 feet away from where you're sitting and keep looking there for about 20 seconds. So gazing off screen at a stationary object, or if you have a pet, watching them do something adorable is a great way to reduce eye strain. And tilt. That is good advice. And I get tilted and I'll start looking at the dog more. There we go. Something else you've stressed is that it's not just about what you do when you're sitting at your desk, how you're sitting. It's what you do when you're going through your daily life and sort of preparing yourself for 
your gaming sessions. So can you talk a little bit about what it means to sort of take a holistic approach to your health and your ability to focus on competitive games, for instance, for a long period of time? Sure. Um, so kind of a microcosm of this whole idea is we really hyper fixate on, on how good of a chair we have, right? Like, you know, it's, it's why Herman Miller makes $1,500 chairs, which don't get me wrong, are very high quality chairs. It's why Respawn and DX Racer and Secret Labs, you know, have contracts with so many teams because people want to have a really good chair because they're thinking, I'm going to sit for a while. This is, you know, the most important piece of equipment I can have. But the best chair in the world is going to do absolutely diddly squat for you if you're not also paying attention to getting enough movement, getting good nutrition and hydration, getting adequate sleep. Yes, that's a big one. Uh, and uh, so kind of all of this together makes you healthy, not just having a good chair that gives you good posture and ergonomics. Um, so kind of from a broader view, you shouldn't just be doing things like getting enough sleep and eating healthy and drinking enough water and moving around just because it will get you better at gaming, but it will in fact improve your gaming performance. And probably the biggest one of those, if, if I could only get people to, to work on one of those things, um, you know, we all know about posture, we all know about moving. If I could only get people to work on one thing out of nutrition, hydration, and sleep, I would get people to work on sleep. It is kind of like the biggest, not actually a secret performance booster. Um, there's a ton of research uh, about the effects of sleep on performance, both in terms of increased injury risk when you don't have enough sleep, um, decreased performance when you don't have enough sleep, um, and significantly improved performance when you are getting adequate or even extra sleep. Um, and I know it's not always an easy thing to accomplish, but if you're taking the time to set up a consistent pre-bed routine and a consistent wake-up routine at whatever time it is that you wake up, making it consistent, making it a habit, making it a pattern, all of those things will improve your sleep quality and sleep quantity, uh, which will really improve your in-game performance without you having to do a whole lot other than just sleep. Going off topic slightly, I imagine as you've said, that can probably be hard to drill into some people's heads, especially maybe young esports players, since there's sort of a culture in gaming of staying up too late. All night marathons, you know, that is mm. considered sort of a fun thing, almost a rite of passage, but you're not going to be a better player if you're staying up till 3 a.m., right? Well, there's Unless a slight asterisk there. So day. if. Right. If your sleeping pattern is set up that way, and there is some research, um, not on gamers specifically, but actually on nurses who work night shifts versus day shifts, it is a little bit tougher to get good high quality sleep during the day than it is at night. That being said, if that is your consistent routine, if you know, you're going to bed at three and waking up at, I don't know, noon, getting like nine hours of sleep, that sounds lovely. Um, if you're doing that consistently, habitually, and you know, with, with a good plan before you go to bed and a good plan when you wake up, there's, there's no reason that you couldn't be as successful as someone who sleeps from, you know, 10 o'clock to six o'clock. Um, and it is important to keep in mind that when you are competing, you are gonna have to work around the time zones of your opponents, the time zones of the tournaments that you're in, um, especially now when we're playing everything online and not necessarily all in the same place at the same exact time. Um, and when we get back to doing it, it's also important to consider how travel affects your ability to sleep well. Um, and what I mentioned about having that pre-bed routine and that morning or whenever you wake up routine, those are important because they give your body those external cues of, okay, I'm drifting off to sleep now, or okay, I am alert, I'm a, a live awake, alert, enthusiastic now. Um, and those things carry over when you do change time zones or when you do change sleep schedules. I guess to sum up some of the main points, and, and obviously this isn't absolutely everything you can do, but what we've talked about here is watch your wrist position, especially when you're resting maybe and not using your mouse, you might default to a bad position that isn't straight. Obviously have good posture, but beyond that, take your breaks, change your, your posture the way you're sitting now and then. Actually take a break when you take a break rather than being <laughs> like me and kind of pulling out your phone and looking at that instead of the screen in front of you, which why, look, why would I look at a smaller screen? Um, well, I'm taking a break. Uh, <laughs> Look away from a screen in general. You said about 20 feet away to mm -hmm. uh, refocus your eyes uh, at a pet, ideally. And uh, ideally, sleep, exercise, diet, <laughs> these things all factor as well. Absolutely. 
I really appreciate you talking to us about this and walking us through some of these basic things. I know, I know there's more you can recommend, including specific exercises and, and routines. Uh, if you want to leave us with a little bit about what you do and your practice. Sure, absolutely. Uh, so I am the co-owner of a company called 1HP. Um, we're a team of physical therapists, athletic trainers, uh, and chiropractors. That's our newest hire, um, who work together to help players play more and hurt less. So we do everything from designing health standards and health initiatives for high school programs to helping college teams get their uh, esports groups off the ground to working with professional teams to design nutrition planning, exercise programming, uh, performance initiatives, uh, and, and really help kind of promote the role of, of health and performance um, in gaming. Um, we're trying to take what we know from traditional sports, um, but we're also trying to draw from some non-traditional sources, um, air traffic controllers, music performers, uh, from professional wrestlers even, uh, night nurses, as we talked about with the sleep scheduling stuff, and really make sure that we're finding all of the research that we can that applies to gamers um, to help people compete better, whether they're just, you know, playing with friends on the weekend or whether they're, you know, playing in tier one um, esports leagues. We can You can find some more of our in-depth coverage on 1-hp.org. Um, obviously, today it was a bit of an overview um, and the goal of this and the articles that we've been putting together on PC Gamer are really give people some like basic, totally easy to implement, you could absolutely change this thing right now um, kind of steps to take to play more and hurt less. Great, well, yeah, we thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna appreciate, again, you taking the time. Thanks so much for having me.